हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम टू जनित एकेडमी ऑनलाइन माय नेम इज शगुफ्ता जयपुरी एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू पार्ट फोर ऑफ द सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम व्हिच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ आईसीएसई क्लास टेन बायोलॉजी करिकुलम सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो लेसन विल बी स्टडिंग अबाउट ब्लड प्लेटलेट्स एंड ऑल्सो द क्लॉटिंग ऑफ ब्लड सो लेट एस फर्स्ट स्टडी वॉट आर ब्लड प्लेटलेट्स so students blood platelets are also known as thrombocytes and they are the indicators of clotting of blood now blood platelets are minute oval or round structures they are non nucleated that is they are without a nucleus they are floating in the blood and these are about 2 to 4 lakh per cubic millimeter of blood in an adult we had studied in rbc it was 4.5 to 5 million then in wbc we had studied it was 4000 to 8000 now here the blood platelets are 2 lakh to 4 lakh per millimeter cube of blood now let us study the origin and life of blood platelets that is the life cycle of blood platelets so the platelets are derived from giant cells known as mega karyocytes and where are these mega karyocytes present in the red bone marrow now these are budded off from the mega karyocytes in a manner that each one is completely surrounded with membrane you can see here there is a big cell mega karyocyte platelets are budded out from it such that each one of them is having a membrane right so from where are blood platelets formed they are budded off from mega karyocytes in a manner that each one is completely surrounded with a membrane now their life span is around 3 to 5 days only and where are they destroyed they are destroyed in spleen so students spleen is a lymphatic organ located in the abdomen all of us know where is spleen located so they are destroyed in spleen so they are very important in clotting of blood so at the site of injury wherever the injury has happened the platelets rush towards that site they disintegrate there and release a chemical substance known as thrombokinase which initiates the process of clotting of blood now let me explain to you the clotting of blood in detail now when a blood vessel is cut the blood escapes from it the blood starts rushing out of it but soon a clot is formed on the wound and the flow of blood is stopped if it were not so the injured person would bleed to death so that is why clotting of blood is very very important now clotting of blood students is also known as coagulation of blood so now let me tell you in detail the step wise clotting of blood now children let me tell you what happens in step 1 wherever there is an injury or a cut okay the tissue cells are injured at that side the blood platelets travel quickly and there they disintegrate okay so injured tissue cells plus this disintegrated platelets release a chemical substance which is known as thrombokinase its other name is thromboplastin it is also known as factor s and nowadays it is called stuart factor so students you should remember all these name these all are the names of thrombokinase so the injured tissue cells along with the disintegrated platelets release thrombokinase or thromboplastin or factor s or stuart factor so the injured tissue cells and platelets release thrombokinase now let us study step 2 now this enzyme this thrombokinase which has been released so now the thrombokinase with the help of calcium ions now where are the calcium ions they are present in the plasma so this thrombokinase along with the calcium ions which are there in the plasma converts prothrombin which is also known as thrombinogen which is an inactive part of the plasma into thrombin right so here you can see that this thrombokinase along with the calcium ion had converted prothrombin into thrombin now prothrombin was an inactive substance which was which was there in the plasma and it has been converted into an active substance now this thrombin act as an enzyme for our next reaction now this the prothrombin is also known as thrombinogen so you should remember all the other names also 
Now let us see step 3. Now this thrombin, okay, again in the presence of calcium ions, react with soluble fibrinogen and convert this soluble fibrinogen which were there in the plasma into insoluble fibrin. Now this fibrin that has been formed is solid. So it is a solid substance that forms threads. Okay. Now these threads are sticky and they form a network that is like a mesh at the wound. So this thrombin converts soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. Now let us see what happens at the mesh in step 4. Let us see what happens in step 4. The blood cells are trapped in the network of fibrin. You can see here the blood cells approaching and they are trapped in the network of fibrin. Now this network shrinks okay, and squeezes out the rest of the plasma which is in the form of a clear liquid. So you must have seen that whenever there is a wound and clot starts to form, you see a yellowish colored liquid oozing out. So that is serum. And the solid mass which is left behind is called clot or thrombus. So thrombus is another name for clot. So here you can see that here there was a site. Here is the site of injury. So platelets rushed there. Now these platelets, the disintegrated platelets along with the tissue generates, they release which hormone? Thrombokinase. Now this thrombokinase converts prothrombin into thrombin and this thrombin act as an enzyme to convert fibrinogen into fibrin. And this fibrin then forms a network and then traps the RBCs, the blood cells in this network and then this network shrinks and oozes out the rest of the plasma in the form of a clear liquid that is serum and the solid thing that is left, the solid mass which is left is called a clot or a thrombus. I hope you have understood this in detail. Now let us revise the reactions of blood clotting again. So first the injured tissue cells along with the disintegrated platelets release a hormone known as thrombokinase. It has so many other names, you have to learn all the other names also. Now this thrombokinase in presence of calcium ions in the plasma converts prothrombin into thrombin. This prothrombin is, was inactive and now it has been converted into an active substance known as thrombin which act as an enzyme. Now here also there are other names, you have to remember them. Now this thrombin again with the help of calcium ions converts fibrinogen which was soluble in the plasma to fibrin which is insoluble solid. Now these fibrins trap the RBCs and a clot is formed. So children you should remember this very well. Now let us study what is the fate of blood. What happens to blood in blood clotting? So as you all know, blood is composed of corpuscles and plasma. What are corpuscles? Red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Now this plasma has fibrin and serum, that yellow colored substance serum. So now the blood divided into corpuscles and plasma. Plasma has fibrin and serum. Now this fibrin along with the corpuscles. Which corpuscles? The platelets that had disintegrated and the RBCs that it had trapped. So these forms a clot. So I hope you understood the fate of blood also. Now you can check the clotting of blood even in a test tube. You can observe clotting of blood even in a test tube. So here you can see uh, I have kept a photograph of a test tube where clotting of blood has happened. You can see there is a yellow colored serum and this is the clot of blood. So if some blood is taken in a test tube, a clot will form in the usual way. And the serum squeezed out from the clot will collect on the surface. So this is the serum that has been collected on the surface. Now let us read some more facts about clotting of blood. If the number of platelets falls down to an abnormally low count, then obviously the coagulation will not happen. The clotting will not happen because platelets are very less. And this often leads to hemorrhage because a lot of blood will flow. Such a situation occurs in certain diseases. You all know in the viral dengue fever, the blood platelets count goes very down and that is why there is an issue of clotting of blood. Now let us read some myths and facts about clotting of blood. 
So clotting can be caused by movement of blood over a rough surface as on cholesterol deposit on the inside of a blood vessel. So clotting doesn't only occur whenever there is an injury. Clotting also happens whenever the blood moves over a rough surface. Here you can see this. This is the blood capillary where blood is flowing smoothly. And here you can see there are deposits of cholesterol. Cholesterol deposit has happened in the arteries. So because of that the surface becomes rough and here you can see formation of clot. So that is why they say to heart patients that they should consume food that is low in cholesterol. Now this is a myth that clotting is dependent on exposure of blood to air. Many a times when you get injury people say that expose your wound to air but that is a myth you should not expose it to air. Because clotting has nothing to do with exposure to air. It will only attract more germs. So that was all about blood platelets and clotting of blood. So if you have liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and write in the comment box. And if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, do it right away and don't forget to tap on the bell icon. Please share our channel with your friends and keep the learning on. Thank you and all the best.